A story the CBS Texas I team has been following for years. As we head into the last few days of the legislative session in Austin, lawmakers are considering several new bills that are related specifically to sex trafficking. And one of them was inspired by a 15 year old girl who disappeared from the American Airlines Center. This was a year ago. We reported extensively. You may remember investigators found that teenager two weeks later in an Oklahoma hotel room where police say that she was being trafficked. Her parents have spoken to us, to the I team, about the need to increase penalties for sex traffickers. And in a follow up story, the I team showed you how private investigators are now assisting law enforcement to track down young victims trapped by sex traffickers. And tonight, the I team's Ginger Allen is here as we continue to dig deep into what is, and I don't think we're all aware of it, a growing crime right in our own backyard here in North Texas. It is growing, and these numbers prove that on any given night in Dallas, up to 400 girls are trafficked on the streets, according to New Friends New Life, that is a local advocacy group. That's shocking, but it's no surprise to the woman you are about to meet. She was at the center of an IT team investigation I actually did back in 2006. But as you are about to see, and I will humbly admit, at the time, this story was not at all what it seemed. How is Dallas and Texas so bad? Well, when you think about where does trafficking take place? Becca Charleston is the mom of a 10 year old, the owner of the Charleston Law Center in Las Vegas. And 17 years ago, the focus of an I-team investigation. Meet Denton native Rebecca Dean. That's me reporting. AKA Nicole Wilson. And that's Becca Charleston, a convicted prostitute who advertises escort services on this national website. This was 2006. Charleston had just been convicted, part of a multi million dollar prostitution ring operating out of an upscale Denton County neighborhood in this house. CBS 11 has also learned that the operation supposedly has generated at least $2 million. Was $2 million accurate? No, it was, there was so much more money. 12 years after that story aired, we met Charleston for the first time, along with another woman also part of the operation. We all sat down in our CBS studios with the federal prosecutors who put them behind bars. And just listen to what we learned was actually happening inside that house. We all had to call each other sisters. Yeah, we were required to call each other sisters. We required. There were rules and laws. Oh, a whole bunch of rules. If you didn't obey the rules, you'd be beaten. Instead of criminals, these women say they were victims. And the two men who put them behind bars say that's exactly what was happening. At the time, the term sex trafficking was just evolving. In this interview, the investigators told us they had learned the women were trapped. Charleston says she was a typical teenager, well liked, a soccer player, slowly lured by an older male friend into this lifestyle, this home, and then beaten if she stepped out of line. When I was 17, 18 years old, I would carry around a hidden rent list of all the things that he would beat me for because I, I foolishly thought that if I just did everything right, then he wouldn't beat me. She says that even included treating her pimp as a customer to make sure she was doing everything right. I can still place myself in the bedroom that I slept in at that house and remember how I was feeling, you know, just crying as he was raping me. Today, she says her story is becoming increasingly common, particularly here in Texas. Research finds most American girls are first trafficked at age 15. In Dallas alone, sex trafficking has been called a $99 million illegal industry. One researcher stated every year, 79,000 Texas minors are victims of sex trafficking. And in this University of Texas study, victims spoke openly about how they were controlled by threats of violence. An 18 year old from Lubbock said a trafficker told her, I will cut your throat if you don't do this. The victims were asked why they cooperated. An 18 year old from Rio Grande Valley said, they always told me they were gonna kill my family. And also heartbreaking, the study shared the victim's goals. Get married, have a family, graduate college, be a chef. Today, Charleston says she is proof that is all possible. I can't believe the opportunity is. She sees progress. She's testified on many related bills. Some are pending now. And in 2021, she proudly helped put Texas in the national spotlight as it became the first state to make buying sex a felony. 
I didn't have hope for a future that didn't revolve around my body being sold. And to now sit here, you know, a decade later on the other side, be a respected leader nationally in the anti-trafficking field, um, because of what I've survived, that's exciting. Since that first I-Team story aired 16 years ago, Charleston has earned her master's degree, received a presidential pardon, opened her law advocacy center, and she travels the country training law enforcement about how to recognize what neighbors, investigators, and even we, the media, did not see back in 2006. I feel embarrassed when I play it because you looked like a criminal, but you were a victim. But nobody knew. I can't look at you guys and, and blame you. This was what, 2006? And I mean, human trafficking was barely even talked about. You've come a long way. Yeah. So I recently spoke at a woman's luncheon and I talked about this trafficking series that we're working on and I was asked by an audience member, what can I do to help? And I promised to get her an answer. I think this is important for all of us. Here's what we learned from Charleston, our experts, and the Department of Transportation. We all need to help watch for a combination of those signs on your screen, tattoos or nail art, typically of money bags, crowns, or a trafficker's name, that's a very common one. High security measures where the victims live or work. Are they working really long hours? Do they have freedom to come and go and speak for themselves? No control of their own money. And then another common one, substance abuse. And if you see something, you need to say something, but be careful to whom you say it. Do not confront the victims or their traffickers. You could be putting yourself or them in danger. What you need to do is call 911 or the human trafficking hotline, which we will put up here on the screen while we talk. Wow. Imagine the turnaround, and, and you've got the legacy with that story all the mm -hmm. way back to 06. Uh, talk, touch a little bit on legislation, but I'd like a little deeper dive on that uh, sex trafficking legislation before uh, Austin right now. So what's happening in this session in terms of proposed bills on what could be done about this? So there are a lot of bills right now and a lot of action could take place in the next 24 hours. I'm going to look at my notes as we talk about some of this. I spoke to a spokesperson with Traffic 911 this morning. Three bills will pass. Two are headed to the governor. He signed one, which increases restrictions for massage parlors. Now, they are very disappointed. One bill will not be heard at all. By tomorrow, they should know the fate of three others. That includes the bill inspired by the case of the young girl at the American Airlines Center, which you talked about at the beginning. That would actually change how law enforcement and investigators look at some of these cases and treat missing persons. Yeah, she's so right, and you so right to point out that back in 06, we almost never heard the term. Mm -mm. Today it's common and, and it's very real and it's a threat. It is. It's and a growing problem. Thank you, my friend. We appreciate it. You bet. Opened our eyes to a lot of good things tonight to, uh, to work on going forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am.